Ab Lava here. Yo, the Spade from the PH. Mikey T, the movie star. Live on Report Card Radio. Yeah. Can you guys take me back to the beginning? Take me back to the creation of major figures on Erie Ave. Looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, back then, Gil didn't rap. <laughs> Gil used to play ball. You know what I mean? So we, you know, I knew him from playing ball. And um, he went off to college. I was playing ball in college. And then um, one day he came home on the weekend, and my brother said, "Yo, I ran into Farad. He told me to bust your ass and rap it." I was like, what, Farad, basketball Farad? Yeah, so I saw him at the Red Door Chinese store in Area Avenue, and I said, yo, you told my brother you bust my ass? He said, yeah. I said, okay, <laughs> spit a verse. So he had this one verse <laughs> that he had back then, and he spit it. And I said, okay, and then I spit a verse, and he grabbed it to my, no, you know, I'm just playing with you, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> and, you know, and from that day, you know, we started doing music, and uh, he and Wallow, um, you know, started Major Figures. Um, they actually would come to my crib, um, all times of night, knocking on the door for me to listen to um, verses that they was putting together and recording at my man Peanut Crib. Um, and, you know, from there, Wallow caught a case, got locked up. And, you know, Gil and I, you know, were still, like, recording and stuff like that. And uh, he told me about Spade. And this is, this is hilarious. I don't know if he remembers this day, but me, Marcus Graham, and Gil went and picked Spade up. Mm -hmm. And he got in the back seat and was sitting behind me. And, and Gil said, yo, it's been a freestyle. And he started freestyling for about seven minutes straight, right? I turned around and said, God damn, my man, you want to rap this motherfucker because I know. And from there, it just kind of like just sparked, man. And Bump, Dutch, everybody just came on board and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we just took off from there. So tell me about how the group started recording tapes and eventually ended up signing to Warner Brothers. We... <clears throat> Honestly, we didn't even purposely wasn't recording tapes. We Graham used to we just exactly. we used to just rap and like if you just start early mixtapes and our interludes, that was just Graham used to just had his little tape yeah. recorder and he just used to record when we just used to and be we, around. And we didn't know it. We didn't know. So it was all natural. Then we used to go, man, we used to go to studio, DJ Kurt. Yeah. We go we'd just get the microphones <laughs> and just be rapping. Like we never really like it wasn't a concentrated effort. Thing. It really wasn't. It we would really... go to we would go to Peanut Crib. Peanut, Peanut was the only dude at the studio in our neighborhood, yep. and he would let us come through record for virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. He'd be on the third floor. We'd be on the third floor. His mom on the second floor, hitting the ceiling with a broom, telling us to turn that shit down. Yeah, and we'd just be in there recording freestyles, or if he made a beat, we'd rap to it. And um, you know, from there, Graham Graham had enough sense to take all the freestyles, record us when we didn't know. To make interviews and shit, and he was the one that made the first, made our first mixtape. For sure, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't know, I seen it the first time in the store. <laughs> I didn't even know we had a mixtape. I seen it in the store. Matter of fact, somebody rolled by me playing, yeah. and I'm like, how did he get that joint? Yeah. I don't even got it. Then yeah. I seen it down on Sound of Area, Sound yeah. of Germany, on Area Avenue. What, pro what prompted that was, um, Peanut made a couple copies for us to for us to just listen to, and dudes were stealing out your car, mm -hmm. and then you had to go back to Peanut for another one. And whatnot. So Graham was like, well, shit, if I press a bunch of them up, we can make some money off it. And then that's how you know, our first mixtape came about. Then it just spread. Like people from Philly that went to college, other places, and all mm -hmm. that stuff, we used to take it, let people hear it. Then it became a demand. Next thing I know, people were trying to book us for shows and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. what? what? We didn't even have a, well, back then it was that. So I'm like, we don't yeah. even got no instrumentals. Yeah. Like, what is we yeah. going, going down there to rap? Like, we yeah. ain't know what we was doing. Yeah, never that. It just happened fast, and the next thing you know, it's like opportunities was coming down the path, not only for, for us as a group, but individually. Mm -hmm. Like, people start wanting a piece of what we had going on, you know what I mean? So, so, yeah. you, so you mentioned that Gilly wasn't really rapping. Wallow actually went to jail. Mm -hmm. So who were the, the members of Major Figures as everything came together? Listen, well, Low, we used to live back to back. On 17th for Colorado Street and I used to have, like I low we used to rap but he used to have a million bar and I, t I used to sit him down because I was in I was rapping with some other guys from my neighborhood and I used to we used to let Wallow tag along with us and I used to just teach him teach him the art of rap and then he came to me one day and played a uh, tape from Bankroll because mm -hmm. at that point I was like man I ain't rapping I'm hustling I got to figure it out he played Bankrolls with him and Gil mm -hmm. 
And he like, yo, I'm starting this new stuff. Uh, and he called me Ace Bad Ace, man. I'm starting this new joint called Major Figures to Squad, bang, bang, bang. And not too long after that, he got knocked off. And then I still really wasn't rapping. I was doing other stuff. And then Gil came up, pulled up on me like, yo, man, we going we gonna to make a run at this. He's like, call me, man. He's like, call me. And for a while, they called me. Then I just, one day, I was like, man, let me call Gil. And uh, that's the day me yeah. got with Gray. Y'all came pick me up. We got in the car and, you know. It was a done deal. And it was a done deal. I, I mean, mean, I know he was part of the group right then and there. Like, when I heard him, I'm like, shit, we got to have him as a part of what we did. Yeah, I didn't even know I was on an audition. <laughs> I didn't even know it was an audition. Because, I mean, back then it was like the reality of, of a dude from Philly getting on rapping wasn't even a reality. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It was nobody on but the roots. Yeah. And Will Smith. Yeah, and, and Bahamas did. Like, yeah. it wasn't like, so if you wasn't in one of them type of genres, we didn't even believe that, that rapping was even a, a reality for us getting on. Mm -hmm. That wasn't going on back then. So obviously, you guys started attracting attention from people like Jay Z. Yeah. How did the uh, signing actually come about? It, re it really was kind of like, we had options. We really could have went to every, every record label in, uh, in the country wanted to sign us. You know, even if they didn't get us, they just wanted a part of us. If they didn't get the whole group, they just wanted the signs, one of the individuals or something. I mean, as you can see, Gil with Swive House was just was the South Label. Me and Dutch on Entertainment, Lava was was out there with Dr. Dre. It was like we was all over. Like everybody just wanted a piece of what we had going on. I mean, the actual sign it was just, it kind of happened quick. It was like, all right, we going here. All right, y'all cool. Y'all this we y'all. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like no big. Formality, which is probably one of our mistakes, <laughs> but you know. So tell me about the album. You were actually featured Spade on the lead single, Yeah, That's Us, pretty heavily. Yeah, I mean, see, when we recorded that album, that album was originally an independent album for the streets. Like we didn't, it wasn't no like first single. We didn't, yeah. we didn't think about those type of things back then. We didn't have that foresight. We were just rapping and making yeah. songs. We made that song just on some humbug, and uh. You know, we put it on, a, they used to have a battle of the beats on Power 99, and, mm -hmm. and, and it just used to keep winning. They played it, just kept winning, kept winning, kept winning, kept winning. People liked it. And then once the label came along, the label ain't do nothing but put out the album we did on our own. They didn't, we didn't go in there and make a whole new album, or they didn't put no... The, 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 the game plan was, they purchased that album, and they was going to use it like a mixtape, and we were supposed to record a new album. But once the single kind of popped, then they switched up and was like, no, nah, we're going to go with the album. We're like, hold up, this was supposed to be the they mix it because we put man. this out independently. And they moved in a whole different direction. And, and they fucked us. And they fucked us, basically. They fucked us. <laughs> we fucked ourselves. Yeah.